is working. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Gregor Sideris. I'm running the Vienna blog, and I have the great honor um, this morning to interview Eva Kaili. She is a member of the European Parliament and very active on on the blockchain and on uh, new internet activities. So, first of all, thank you very much. Um, Miss Kylie for the interview. Thank you for having mm. me. It's an honor. I have um, the three topics today to discuss for the audience. It's about blockchain. We talk about the decentralized internet and uh, last utility tokens. So let's start with the blockchain. Um, tell our audience about uh, your work at the European Parliament promoting blockchain technology. Well, I've been start. I've been working on blockchain since 2015. Actually, um, uh, it's been like three to four years now. Um, since uh, the Greek crisis and uh, hit us, I came from Greece, and I realized that we have to figure out uh, new solutions for the problems that we had, and we were not uh, able enough to protect the citizens. So I explored a bit the virtual currencies, and then I realized that behind the currencies. Uh, there is blockchain, an amazing infrastructure mm. that can actually be the next internet. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, what does blockchain, if you talk to the ordinary people, what does it mean? Can you explain a little bit to the person yeah. who doesn't know? Is, um, nobody can control your transactions, so you cannot use your device, your mobile phone or your laptop to exchange any value or to do any contract with somebody. And this contract it can be uh, immutable, it can be transparent, and you decide, nobody can delete it, nobody mm -hmm. can go back and delete this transaction. It's very fast, there is no friction, you don't, you don't need intermediaries. Why? Because um, this contract is on the blockchain forever, and this means that uh, you don't need somebody to guarantee that. So this removes a big cost and makes it um, much faster. So I think this is the, the, the main thing to say it in simple words. Basically, you're decentralizing the peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Uh, that sounds uh, very exciting. Can you tell us some concrete examples how the citizens of Europe might benefit? Yes, yeah, so uh, imagine you have a land registry on blockchain and you want to buy or sell a house. Uh, you, you basically can get a contract where you write down uh, where your house is and so you describe it and basically the, the infrastructure can offer you the choice by your identity um, to say which properties that you're selling and mm -hmm. then you sell it to somebody on your, on your phone um, and uh, you can have this transaction there without paying the huge cost that you pay mm -hmm. uh, if you go through um, big offices to guarantee that the transaction actually took place and uh, you can get instantly your money um, and it passes, you know, from one to the other. And this is just one thing. Another thing is that you can have on your mobile phone all your health data and uh, you can check if the doctor saw your data, if he used them and for how long. And if you don't want him to see or have them anymore, you can um, take back his access. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. Um, in the European countries, are there any countries which are leading in the blockchain development? Mm -hmm. So we do have some examples. Um, so now we have Estonia, of course, because they were very advanced in uh, digitalization. Uh, we do have Netherlands that try to do some things on uh, land registry. France is trying to have a big registry of the ICOs and uh, uh, better definitions there. We do have uh, uh, Luxembourg, they made an effort, uh, and uh, Malta, they have legislation, but it's not actually uh, activated yet from what I know of. Um, we do have um, Cyprus, we have the first university of blockchain in Cyprus, the University of Nicosia. You can get, you can pay in bitcoins, mm. you can receive your certificate on blockchain, so everybody can check if you're actually if you actually Mr. Jesper Rasmussen, please Sorry, come to the plenary room in Hall A on the second floor. At least it's not us. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah, not that's looking a good for point, us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, that's about it. Great examples. Um, 
The question is there needs probably a lot of people educated now how they will work with this new technology. Uh, will the EU incentivize education on blockchain and how? So we're trying to do that. So we try to have um, blockchain lessons after the coding lessons for girls. Mm -hmm. So we try to do blockchain for people that want to learn blockchain. Yep. And as I said, we have a university that offers these courses. You can have mm. online courses. Um, and now we can try uh, to have more scholarships paid by the EU for these courses on uh, new technologies, not just yeah. blockchain, you know, yeah. data governance and artificial intelligence, they require digital skills and the new jobs that will be created, they require digital skills and the jobs yeah. that we lose, it's right. because of the lack of digital skills. Ah, that sounds exciting. Um, there's not always <laughs> um, easy things. Is there any key challenges in your role? What are the hurdles you face? So there is resistance from the traditional mm. system because mm. in, in Europe uh, things work in some ways, but uh, imagine in countries that you cannot get a bank account if you don't have mm. your own home or if you don't have a proof and um, you cannot make any transaction, you don't have the right to start your own company mm -hmm. and uh, you have no security. With these technologies, this is uh, uh, an obstacle that you can overcome. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it brings huge potential for the unbankable people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is something that uh, I see, as I said, the resistance of the system to change. Uh, but because of AI also, I think um, slowly they understand they have to adapt to these technologies that are disrupting them. So unless you adapt, you will be disrupted but they can actually embrace it and use it to benefit citizens, to reduce the costs yes. uh, for them and any friction. <coughs> Yeah, I see with your energy and with your enthusiasm, I think definitely work out. Well, you know what? It's something that I see the potential mm -hmm. and um, I do believe there will be not just new jobs, uh, there's going to be a new trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, if friction is removed and intermediation, imagine that the hidden fees of uh, Europe mm -hmm. on transactions is close to, they're close to 130 billion. Wow. Just imagine mm -hmm. what you can do if you save a small amount of this money. Yeah, that's a huge uh, savings. Coming back, uh, thank you very much, to the second uh, part is about decentralized Internet. We all know the Internet is the biggest innovation of the last century, uh, but the info Internet has evolved in a not distribution, not um, neutral, not environmental friendly and not cost effective thing. Um, the question now is, uh, um, when we look at the decentralized internet vision you have in the EU, uh, what um, are the benefits people can have out of this one? Well, first of all, think that you can have um, not a central server to control everything, but a trusted community that uses an application. Um, this, is, this means you have a shared trust and you have more control of your data. Uh, you can be rewarded if they use your data. You can uh, see who uses your data. I think this will bring a lot of trust back that mm -hmm. maybe internet is losing. And especially after some cases we had recently. Yes. Uh, and we know that our data are being out there, even sold, and some people benefit from that. And we can be discriminated because of the bad use of our data. Uh, I think people feel unsafe sometimes. Mm -hmm. And with uh, new technologies and decentralization, they can <coughs> get ba back um, this trust. Okay, looks exciting. Uh, the question is, are there any first projects or used cases on the decentralized internet you support, you know of? So, <coughs> if we talk about uh, blockchain especially, mm -hmm. uh, I know they are building a lot of blockchains that can be decentralized. Mm -hmm. the, the one application that we all know is Bitcoin. Yes. So basically it's a decentralized uh, actually application. Mm -hmm. uh, people can share value and they can do transactions and uh, they it's, it's totally decentralized. And based on Bitcoin, you can have uh, many applications. We are funding <coughs> now pilots like My Health, My Data mm -hmm. to be able to have your health there, your health data there. And as I said before, you have right. hospitals that they can check your data. Mm -hmm. You can carry them with you in its <coughs> member states. Yes. Because if I'm here in Austria yeah. and uh, people don't understand English or I don't speak English, it's not very easy to transfer my health data if I want to go to a hospital. Yes, exactly. In this case, you remove these these barriers and these problems you mm -hmm. have, 
and it can help also Europe to integrate a bit more. Ah, okay, that sounds very, very prospering. Um, how can uh, developers um, contribute to the decentralized internet? So developers. Developers, let's say. Well, developers themselves, they have a lot of power now mm -hmm. because they understand the technology and uh, they have to have consensus to, uh, yes. um, to work with this technology. Right. And they have to agree to what they're going to do yes. because this technology requires consensus to change. Yes. And uh, they have to, be to work close together to be smart enough not to have problems in the algorithms. Mm -hmm that they built. So I think they gain a lot of power and uh, if they use it for a good cause, like the, as I said, the philosophy of yeah. decentralization to give the <coughs> control back to the citizens and reduce the fees of intermediaries, yes. I, think, um, I, I think everybody will want to be a developer, a computer scientist. It's going to be a cool thing to do. Oh yeah, that, that's great. <laughs> Maybe I, I, I get my son <laughs> being a developer. So uh, last but not least, um, and thank you for the very valuable answers, I was... Um, You were mentioning about Bitcoin and digital currencies and um, there is also <coughs> uh, many insecurities on, 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 on the Bitcoin and uh, the publicity, etc. So how can we avoid in the future that kind of um, things? Well, I think first of all you need education and mm -hmm. you need an understanding. And of course, we need to be careful of uh, the information we get. Um, so uh, th the technology can be used for good or bad. Mm -hmm. So it depends how somebody uses it. You can have bad things happening on the dark web or even on the internet. And you have to be sure that you're alerted and that uh, you're educated to understand what kind of applications you use and how you use them. So it depends. We cannot blame a technology. We cannot blame s mm. something like uh, um, a, a virtual currency. It depends who uses it and why. Because in the end, it can be an amazing solution. Mm -hmm. And with bad news around it, you can stop it from providing us with uh, great potential. Mm. And as I said, you can use it for, uh, for example, in Africa, if somebody wants to start a new business, but he cannot get a bank account, um, using Bitcoin, he can actually uh, build a small company. He can create yeah. jobs. He can have a future for himself. Um, so it has the potential. So I try to see the negative uh, things mm -hmm. and protect citizens from that. Yes. Uh, we try to set up some rules, some verification and standards and uh, test the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, we have to support innovation and we have to be technology neutral. Yes. Um, uh, sounds very promising. Uh, there is also this kind of um, new invention that we call it utility or asset-backed token. That means you have, let's say, a digital currency, which in the back is backed by, uh, let's say, some services or some other things. What? How do you see the involvement of this? Well, it's kind of like um, these tokens you can use like mm. crowdfunding. You can right. get equity of a business. Mm -hmm or you can get a promise for return if the business <coughs> goes well. So you, you give the money through tokens. Mm -hmm. you, it's like you're buying um, a percentage or an idea. Mm -hmm. And the moment it goes well, you can get through the tokens back the value of what you offered right. in the beginning. So I think it's a very smart way to be rewarded for your participation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tool for crowdfunding. Yes. And um, um, I think that in a few months we're going to have actually legislation on that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have the legislation for initial coin offerings. Yes. And I think this is going to be interesting because, you know, the liquidity doesn't exist because the banks are overregulated. Yes. And with these tools you can get uh, liquidity for SMEs and start Okay, so you will gonna be uh, very active on that development too. Well, we just <laughs> finished the crowdfunding file and right. we called for a follow-up with ICOs. Okay, great. So I think we are we are done. I'm very happy you give us this very open and uh, very interesting view on blockchain on the new technologies. Um, I want to thank you and uh, tell you that in at least in the European Union uh, we didn't move fast the last years but uh, now in this Monday that I have we're working for a digital Europe, a digital economy and we remove barriers that even citizens didn't know existed mm. and imagine if you try to enter a site in, uh, from here uh, of Italy or Spain and you are redirected to a different site. Right. So these problems 
um, since yesterday, since two days mm -hmm. ago, they don't exist. You cannot be redirected. You cannot be discriminated. You can buy something online. Yeah. You have to have the same price like any other member state of Europe. Yeah. So I think we're working a lot to yes. create the unique uh, market here. And uh, so businesses can have a bigger market than yeah. their own member state. And this is why we have to keep working together. And thank you for this opportunity. Yes. Thank you. I really, really acknowledge your, your great support, especially on that kind of digital activities. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I was a journalist, so your support <laughs> is also really important. Well-educated and informed citizens. We help a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you.